Good morning and welcome to uh, our weekly webinar. Good morning, Stuart. Good morning. What's happening? What's, yeah, that was my question. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Market had a bad day yesterday. Uh, markets will have bad days from time to time, but our, our general uh, attitude towards the year two, 2023 is to be bullish rather than bearish. Absolutely. Mr. Market was grumpy yesterday, but he's in a better mood today, I saw. Right, um, including for our all our concierge stocks are up today, so that's good. good. Um, it's the seventh of uh, February, and before we uh, jump into our uh, favorite, the third of our, uh, our favorite sectors in in 2023, which is resources, I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to um, our weekly uh, investing newsletter because we've been publishing that now for a couple of months, and the reception has been really good. Basically, what it is um, on Saturday morning, 8:30, you get in your email uh, inbox, you get the best of stocks on under essentially and what does that mean it's in a nutshell it's stock ideas that we have uh, you know, we wrote about certain stocks in that week it's uh more sort of general market commentary in can be uh, our, our webinar um we, we do do that one every week but also ceo interviews that we've done a lot of last year and we're cranking that up uh, ramping it up now as well for 2023 so that's what what you'll get in that um in that newsletter and and the, the interesting thing is you it's basically a wrap up of the market in that prior week um so like i said it's there's a lot of uh people that like it uh, it's just an easy summary of what's happened and the way to uh to get on that list basically go to the stocks and under website and there's a few buttons out there uh that will allow you to uh, to sign up just press those buttons there's one in the newsletter archive um which you'll see in the menu at the top uh all our past newsletters are in there. You can sign up there as well. And uh, this could be you on Saturday morning um, with your coffee and your croissant and uh, reading through all, all that we wrote uh, in that particular week. So sign up today, stocksandunder.com, and uh, be one of that group that um, the lazy the lazy investors, basically, getting the updates on, on Saturday morning. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because, and the reason is because we do get a lot of positive feedback on that, and it would be a shame if you missed out on that. Um, going to a very specific investment topic steward um we've been talking about our favorite sectors for 2023 over the last few weeks today we've got our our last one which is uh which is resources so take us through that one yeah 2023 is going to be a good year for resources uh not every commodity will behave the same but in an environment where uh, economic growth is generally okay um uh interest rates moderating uh inflation getting under control it means economic activity can come back to life and of course, um, a lot of what uh, what the miners do these days has to do with our uh, energy transition over to uh, renewables. So um, uh, there's activity in the resources sector there, but uh, th there's also uh, interesting things to look at elsewhere. Um, as you can see on the, the slide there, that's how we think about 2023. Interest rates coming down, inflation coming down. Time Hang to on. Go. Let me go back one. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say on that, Mark. All right. <laughs> so um, it's a good year to be in resources because when, uh, when China is part of the world economy, uh, commodities generally are in demand. Uh, uh, look at most uh, metals, for example, and uh, China is either a major producer or a major consumer or both. Um, the, the extreme case of that is rare earths, where China traditionally is more than 90% of the world's production of, of, of rare earths. Uh, but uh, wherever you look, uh, uh, China is the, um, is the important uh, player in the game. Um, Looking uh, at individual commodities, you often see that there's been an underinvestment in new mines, uh, either because uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it doesn't quite fit the ESG criteria of many uh, 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 investment funds, or there have been other supply and demand issues at stake. When you get underinvestment in a commodity, uh, the price uh, tends to compensate over time. Uh, here in 2023, if we look, the price of most commodities is favorable. Doesn't mean it necessarily pu pulling, pushing upwards in each case, but what it means is it's the sort of price where if you're a miner of that commodity or you want to mine that that particular commodity uh you um uh, you could you could produce and not be at the cost of production so that's why uh, i think there's going to be a fair bit of activity in this space I'll, I'll gauge the mood when i fly over to perth next week always enjoy my trips to perth because even in a bad year uh west australians are optimistic but if i find them particularly excited well that'll be confirmation of what i've been telling you about this morning um what are the favorites uh, I would name five. Copper, uh, industrial staple. Uh, uh, copper is, is kind of like the bellwether of how the world economy is going. Throw in two other factors. Uh, less mines than there used to be, or as in less young mines than there used to be, if I could put it like that. Um, so uh, there's there's very little supply out there. Uh, and uh, the new demand for from electric vehicles, which consume a heck of a lot of copper. Uh, 
between those two things, uh, now is a good time to be in copper now that uh, China is back in the game. Um, well, people who like battery minerals will often talk about lithium. I like to talk about graphite. And the reason is it's the underappreciated part of the lithium ion battery. Uh, and producers of that commodity, I think, will do better over time, in part because you'll see increased price transparency for that mineral going forward. Oil and gas. OK, we're not going to go back to the really high prices that uh, uh, followed just after the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. But you do have strong pricing at the moment. Uh, look at West Texas Intermediate. It's well above the level, the $60 a barrel level, that I say you, you can enter the water and not and not get yourself burnt. And this uh, warms my heart. Gold is back. Gold was having a bad year last year, uh, in spite of inflation breaking out over the world, because people were dumping their gold alongside their cryptocurrencies. Well, now gold has turned around and it's coming back in the other direction uh, and uh, could potentially bust over 2,000 US an ounce, uh, which, which it hasn't done in a while. So, so that could be pretty good. And finally, potash. Uh, potash is one of, uh, one of a number of fertilizer minerals. Uh, what do these things have in common? We all like to eat. There's 8 billion people on the planet. And in order to uh, more efficiently raise crops to feed those people, uh, we're going to need more potash. Um, that's a commodity, I think, that's, that's finally coming into its own. So all, out of those five, Stu, um, which one is your absolute favorite? Got to be copper, uh, because the world needs it right now. There's hardly any inventories of copper around, uh, but by the historical standards of uh, LME stockpiles. Uh, so, uh, so anyone who's got some copper and, and uh, is, is selling now is doing quite well. Uh, I think, for example, of a small company uh, with a mine, new mine in Queensland called Austral Resources, ASX AR1, very small company, uh, only got a very small uh, resource life from the, the, the mine that it's working. But uh, its stock has been jumping quite heavily uh, because it's a new producer of copper. Right. And you've got quite some choice, right? If you want to go into copper, you've got Tenfire, you've got C6C, uh, Copper Mountain Mining. So there's quite a few players on the ASX, actually, that you could Right. Play. Right. So... What are the what are the stocks you should be watching? Um, uh, BHP is always a is always a good one in the resources space because they've got so much. But importantly, right now they've got a heck of a lot of copper, and they've got a heck of a lot of potash. Or potentially they'll have a lot of potash thanks to that magnificent Jensen project up in northern Saskatchewan in Canada. Um, uh, so so BHP uh, uh, reckoned it would make so much shareholder value out of potash that it was willing to sell its oil and gas assets to um, to, to Woodside uh, a little while ago. Um, so, yeah, b b expect BHP to do well in a year like this one. Uh, Northern Star is one of the world's leading gold uh, gold uh, producers. Uh, as an aside, I never thought I saw this happen. We saw Newcrest uh, subject to a bid yesterday. Uh, that's telling you that uh, there's going to be a lot of M&A in the, in the gold space. Uh, and, and gold equity is relatively undervalued because of the hard times that gold went through last year. So um, uh, Northern Star is, is already one of the world's leading producers. Could get even bigger. Uh, Sandfire, uh, Mark mentioned that one a second ago. Uh, pure copper play. They started with the De Grusser, uh, copper mine in Western Australia, now expanding out to a large copper producing uh, asset in Spain and then another project in Botswana. Santos. Um, I like Santos so much. Here's my copy of the corporate history, Blue Flames, Black Gold uh, uh, for, for Santos, which I've been reading at the moment. Um, Santos is a consistent uh, uh, grower. Um, either it buys assets on the cheap or it discovers uh, new, new, um, new oil and gas assets itself, but it's in for the long haul. Uh, and and uh, if you look at the chart, it's been moving through a, a very interesting uh, range between about seven and eight, but it keeps consistently going just below seven and then bouncing back. Um, so the chart action on Santos, I find very interesting at the moment. Um, uh, and and if, if you time that right, it could be a good trading stock. For graphite, uh, Syrah Resources is, is the standout candidate because it's the one that's producing now from uh, Balama in Mozambique. And, and also the uh, Vidalia uh, project that uh, we're not producing now, but they're getting ready to, to start supplying graphite from out of Vidalia. Now, Cyrus critics will point out that at Vidalia, they're going to have uh, to validate the product, uh, for, which is a downstream graphite product for the battery industry. And that might take a while. Nonetheless, um, they're, actually, um, they're actually on the throes of getting, getting, um, um, getting that project to, to, to work. Uh, so as a, as a bellwether of what's going on in graphite, uh, take a close look at Cyra Resources. You might, Stuart, want to mention the, uh, the, the smaller graphite players that you and I own, BA. Uh, right. Full disclosure, obviously. Yeah. So BlackRock Mining is, is I own that one. Uh, it's in uh, Tanzania. The Mahenga uh, uh, graphite mine is, is a billion dollar mine on the definitive feasibility study. Uh, uh, and uh, and they've, they've, they've done all their paperwork to get it together. They just need to get uh, to get the mine funded. Um, and I suspect in this kind of environment, there's some willing uh, funding partners. Mark, you own Evian. Uh, Evian, not the uh, not the the spring water from um, from France. 
but uh, the 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 company that wants to develop the large um, uh, graphite deposit in southern Madagascar. Um, Madagascar is a great place to find graphite, and it's a great place to develop it. Mining friendly jurisdiction. Uh, Rio Tinto put put in a um, a, a mineral sands uh, project not far away from where uh, everyone wants to develop their uh, their graphite project, and that company has been relentless in in, uh, in in hammering away at moving forward that project. I think uh, Tom uh, Revy will eventually get this into work, and uh, Mark, with his shareholding, will make out like uh, like a bandit. That's uh, that's not what I want to hear, Stuart. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't like the word "eventually." I, I I reckon you're on the right side of history with with this one. No, I, I was focused on uh, make out like a bandit. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, finally, uh, Woodside Energy. Um, uh, you you want to go in oil and gas with the companies that are committed to it. Not the ones that are all wokey and uh, and and pretend like they care about um, they care about uh, about being woke rather than actually producing oil and gas. Now, don't get me wrong. Santos and Woodside are not, are not um, environmental predators. Um, uh, they've both worked on carbon capture and storage projects for their um, uh, for, for for the the stuff that they produce. But they are committed to being in oil and gas for the long haul, and we will need uh, the, the stuff that they produce well into the two thousand and forties and beyond. At the moment, you can get both these these stocks at ridiculously value, low valuations, given the, the growth, and even with a, with with the gas price environment not being what it was in two thousand and twenty two. Uh, and the reason is Woodside has always got uh, multiple growth um, growth options, as has um, as has Santos, and a good uh, exploration ethic as well. Um, so that's what I like about those two companies. So how to play resources? Um, I like to go to investor meetings like the one portrayed here on the on the right. Uh, and just listen to what the other punters are interested in. Um, uh, inevitably, you'll get a sense for what commodities are fashionable and, and what com the commodities are, 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 are out of fashion just by talking to the companies that are presenting it as well as the attendees. Um, the ideal time to go into a into a, a stock is when everyone hates the commodity. So, uh, Mark, you'll recall very well, when I first started talking uranium and lithium, um, uh, they were the most, um, um, they were the girls that could never get a dance at the dance, basically. That was well before they actually started to move up. I remember uranium, that was about nine months before the market started to move. You saw that coming already. So right, right. Very so the, 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 the key is uh, what's the supply demand dynamic uh, going forward? Uh, and more importantly, does the market like or hate the commodity? Well, everyone hated uranium because it had, it had disappointed everyone from about 2011. I, one got the sense that that was about to change. Um, what do I see? Um, what, what commodities do I see that in right now? Uh, not many, because because since 2016, uh, we, we've we've generally been in, in bull market territory for for, um, for for most commodities. I think the one that, uh, that that people fail to get really excited about is gas right now. Uh, it's not like the gas prices aren't reasonable if, if you check the, your, your your gas bill at your home lately. Um, uh, but it's it's um it's it's one that uh, that doesn't tend to get people as excited as it as it should. So so that that kind of get, gets me interested. Avoid the commodities that people love because you might be buying them at a time when the commodity will still be priced well, but the but the the price cycle will be turning. Um, the landed price of um of lithium in China has been coming back uh, just lately for the for the f uh, first time in a while. Uh, I fear it might uh, start impacting uh, uh, lithium producers uh, in terms of their stock price in the not too distant future. Um, generally, it's a good idea unless you really know your stuff to, to go with the um, established producers or the, the, the companies that are working on uh, on advanced projects, uh, and that's what the companies I just mentioned have in common. And always have an idea what the break-even price of the commodity in question is. For instance, I knew Santos was good value several years ago when they were able to confidently report that their break-even price, uh, oil plus gas uh, plus oil equivalent in terms of gas, was about twenty a barrel. Uh, oil at the time had gone to minus twenty-seven, but it, it snapped back fairly quickly and it was creeping into the forties before too much longer uh, uh, after that. And these days it's making out quite quite well. But the important thing is watch the chart. Uh, watch the chart and watch the chart. If you if you remember nothing else from today's webinar, watch the chart. Um, to, no, I, I've lost count of the number of times I've bought at the wrong time because I wasn't watching the chart and I was watching the fundamentals of the story uh, g g going forward. Um, you've got to, you've got to uh, not fight the tape, but work with the tape alongside all these other factors that I've been talking about. All right, thank you, Stuart. That was very, uh, very helpful. So that was the third of our um, uh, three most you know, favorite sectors for the three years. So we had technology, life sciences, and, and resources. So if you want to have a look at uh, what we said about the other two, go back, uh, go to, go to the Stocks and Other web, uh, website and click uh, videos, and you'll find our webinars from the past couple of weeks over there. Now, uh, any viewers who are in um, in Fremantle in Western Australia, um, Tuesday to Thursday of next week uh, for the uh, Vertical Events Explorers Conference, I'll be there. So you'll see me working the floors 
talking enthusiastically to um, to all those people who are, who are bringing the next generation of minds uh, of minds forward. If you recognise me in the crowd, come, come over and say hello. I assure you, I don't bite. <laughs> I'll be careful what you wish for, Stu. You might be uh, swamped with, uh, with investors. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week. See you soon.